Hey, welcome. We've been talking about dimensional analysis now for a couple lessons before this, and we're ready to try a little more difficult problem. And so this is a good assessment to see if you've been understanding what we've been talking about lately. If you're just jumping in and not able to do this problem, you might want to watch my previous videos on this topic. I will put links up in the upper right to those videos so you can click on them if you'd like to. But for now, let's talk about Usain Bolt. Usain Bolt is an amazing runner. Just absolutely incredible, fastest man in the world. This is a picture of him. He's here out in front in the 2008 Olympics. He's so far in front. Really an amazing and incredible athlete. So let's go ahead and take Usain Bolt's running ability and make it into a physics rate problem so we can talk about something interesting here. So let's say Usain Bolt was traveling at a speed of 12.27 meters per second. How fast is that in miles per hour? So you could be wondering, why are we going to miles per hour? One, I want to do a rate problem that uses dimensional analysis. Two, I want to compare something that uses the metric system to our everyday life. And if you grew up in the United States, you're probably more familiar with miles per hour. So let's go ahead and see how to approach this problem. The first thing I'm going to do is just write down the given value. And in this case, the given value is a rate. So it's 12.27 meters per second. And that's okay. You can have a rate be your given value. That's the thing you're going to start with. And then we just need to start doing dimensional analysis. So start multiplying it by fractions that are equal to 1. So we don't really change the value, the amount of the given value, in this case the rate of how fast Usain Bolt is traveling. We just change how that is counted. And so let me show you what I mean by that. The first fraction I'm going to add in is this one, one mile over 1609.34 meters. And so this is the hardest step right here. So you could say, well, how did you get this? First of all, I do happen to know that one mile is equal to this amount of meters. Based on that, what I can do is think to myself, well, I have meters up here in the numerator. I need meters in the denominator so I can cancel out meters. All right, so I'm going to take this equivalency, this equation where these two things are set equal to each other, and I want meters in the denominator. How do I do that? Well, I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 1609.34 meters. Obviously, if I do something to the right side of the equation, I have to do the same thing to the left side. So that's what I'm doing here. And what happens to these things over here? This number and this unit over here, they both what? They both cancel out to 1. And so what we've done is we've proven with this equation right here, based on this equivalency, we've proven that we can make a fraction that is equal to 1. We can take that and multiply that. So that's I've circled in red to show you what we're doing here. Multiply that by our given value. And we have already talked about the identity property of algebra. Remember, if you multiply a given value by a fraction that has been shown to be equal to 1, you're really not changing the amount of stuff you have. Like in this case, how fast he is traveling. You're just changing how it's counted. So if you take a look at this, we've gone ahead and multiplied our given by this fraction that's equal to 1. And what we're going to be able to do with that is cancel out these meters because you treat these units as if they are an algebraic thing that need to be canceled out. Otherwise, they end up in our answer. So now we're left with miles per second. That's one step closer to where we want to be, but it's not there yet. We still have a couple more steps to go. We want to get out of seconds into hours, and there is something in the middle, right? Between seconds and hours. So what is that? That's going to be minutes. And so I want you to try to anticipate what the fraction is that I'm going to put in here that relates seconds and minutes. All right, and so here it is. Remember, I will need to have seconds up top to cancel out these seconds down below. So I have to have seconds up here, minutes down below here. Notice I am writing in and thinking about my units first, and then my number is second. So my units are really crucial to this. Have to have the seconds up here to cancel out these seconds, and then the minutes will be on the bottom here. So 60 seconds is equal to one minute. And so I've got that second fraction that's equal to 1 here. I can multiply that together and think about what's happening. I'm canceling out these seconds and these seconds here. So now my units are in miles per minute. We're getting closer. We're not there yet, though. We still need to do one more thing, and that's one more conversion with minutes and hours. So I want you to anticipate what I'm going to write over here. What do you think we need as a fraction to be able to cancel out minutes and get in hours? 
Well, we're going to need something like this. We have to have minutes up top and hours down below, and they have to make sense. The 60 goes with the minutes because 60 minutes is equal to one hour, right? If I put the 60 down below here and the one up top, that would be a mistake. And now at this point, I can cancel out my minutes and notice what units I'm left with. I'm left with miles per hour. And that's what we want. We go ahead now at the very end of the problem, once we've done all of this work, now we can plug in our numbers and use a calculator and figure out what the answer is going to be. In this case, it's going to be 27.45 miles per hour. So that was just a quick recap of some of the things we've been doing. If you've been able to understand what I've said here about dimensional analysis, you're pretty much good to go to work with dimensional analysis for the most part. Hopefully this has been helpful. If you have a comment or a like, please throw those up. And I hope you have a great day.